good evening, or I should have said good morning, rather. Well, it's not twi quite 12 yet, so we're going to say good evening to all your cyber friends and your submitted man with the late night edition of Walking Through the Word. In other words, we're giving God all the praise and honor. <clears throat> I was trying to study the Sunday school, <clears throat> and I read over it, and it's something that came to my mind in, 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 in the study of the Sunday school for tomorrow morning. It's something that came to my mind from the Old Testament and uh, about Elijah and his disciple, Elisha. See, we get that mixed up. A lot of people, you know, they think that's the same person. But no, 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 no. It's Elijah and Elisha, two different people. Elijah was God's prophet that was during the time of Ahab and Jezebel. And Elijah was the one that challenged the Baal prophets and cut them up. Over 450 some odd prophets of uh, Baal prophets of, that belonged to Jezebel. Jezebel said that she was going to kill him. And then the same Elijah that was so powerful on Mount Carmel was the same one that went running from this one woman, Jezebel. But the reason, and like I said, we give an honor to the cyber friends, all of you. You know who you are. You know who you are. In other words, Sister Kate, Sister Linda, Sister Tina, and all the one that have been so faithful uh, from, the, from day one told me the man and jumped on what I was doing and they stayed with it. Uh, we that means a lot and we just gonna we're gonna say that we give we give y'all the utmost uh, honor for that. But the reason why like I said I was I was studying the Sunday school lesson I thought and my mind went back to Elijah. Because of what Paul was speaking in this moral Sunday school Paul was speaking of about our salvation. In other words, that nothing can separate us from the love of God, for he have us in Christ Jesus. In other words, he stick with us through the end, to the end, to the very end. He said, Lord, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And that's what made my mind catapult backward to the time Elijah. Now, for those of you that may not know, I'm not talking to the one that know, but I'm talking to the one that may not know. Elijah was God's man at that particular time and he had like I said he had defeated 450 of the Baal prophets and cut them up and everything and God answered him with, on his altar with by fire and it was this same Elijah that was by the book the brook Cherub that God sent to the widow woman in Zarephath to you know Elijah Elijah fed by a raven. And that's a scavenging bird. They don't share their food with nobody, but God calls the raven to feed at the brook share it. What we see now, the reason why I believe that my mind catapulted back to Elijah and Elisha is because of what Elisha, which was Elijah's disciple, he told him that he wanted a double portion of the anointing that was on Elijah. In other words, it had been known that God was getting ready to rapture Elijah. He was going to take Elijah up in a whirlwind. And the chariot came. The chariot of God came to take Elijah back to heaven. And when Elisha asked Elijah for this, he said, you ask a hard thing. But he said, but nevertheless, if you see me when I go up, it'll be granted to you to have a double portion of the anointing that's on my life. So Elijah got ready to travel. He went to Gilgal first. Now, it's a reason why Elijah went to these here four different places. And I'm not going to really speak too much on them tonight, but I will do a Bible study sometime in the future on these here four places to let everybody know exactly why. He went to these four places in this order. He went to Gilgal, he went to Bethel, he went to Jericho, and then he crossed Jordan. Each time he tried to get Elisha to stay there, Elisha said, no, as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. I'm not going to leave your side. And Elisha didn't leave him. 
Elisha stuck right with him until they, they went to Gilgal, they went to Bethel, they went to Jericho, and they crossed the River Jordan. But now, and after they crossed the River Jordan, that is when the fiery chariot came down out of heaven, and Elijah stepped on it, took Elijah back to heaven, and Elijah dropped his mantle down to Elisha for him to carry on the ministry. And sure enough, Elisha got a double portion of the anointing that was on Elijah's life. Because if you read the story, Elijah did 20 miracles. Elisha did 20 miracles. Elijah only done 10. So it was a double portion of anointing that was on his life. I'm going to speak about these four places just to get to whet y'all appetite on the Bible study that's coming sometime in the future. Now, I'm not going to promise you I'm going to do this next Tuesday. I'm not going to promise you that. I may and I may not, but I will do a study on these places. But I'm going to tell you what they are and what they mean. Gilgal is a place of cutting away the flesh. This is the place where circumcision was taking place when the children of Israel left, those that were left Egypt and those that were not circumcised. Because, see, circumcision started with Abraham. Every Jewish male be circumcised. That started with Abraham. But you see, the children of Israel had been in the Egypt 430 years. They had got away from the, a lot of them from the circumcision. They were slaves. So it was in the wilderness, in the place of Gilgal, where Moses commanded that all of the males, in other words, according to God's law, they had to be circumcised. It's the cutting away of the flesh. In other words, Gilgal is a place that we all got to go through. We got to get rid of self, which a lot of us can't do. We we can't get rid of self. We, 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 it, 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 is, it, is, it is crucial that you kill self, but a lot of us have a problem with that because most of us are selfish. But when you cut away the flesh, that's where you go to Gilgal. This, this even in your Christian walk, believe it or not, it's a pattern for Christian walk. You cut away your flesh, then you go to Bethel. Bethel is a place of promise. Bethel is the place where God gave Abraham the promise or what he was going to have. In other words, it was at Bethel that he gave the promises. Matter of fact, it was at Bethel that Joseph, that Jacob got the promise. In other words, or, or God gave you promise there in the, at the place of Bethel. That's where you get all the goodness and the promises from God. Then here come Jericho. Remember now, Jericho is a place of warfare. See, in other words, when soon as God give you the vision and he make a promise to you, here come the devil. Every time, here come the devil. See, that's 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 just that's just the way it is. So, in other words, when you leave Bethel, when you leave the place of problem, you now you got to fight the devil. You got to go fight warfare. That's why they went to Jericho. Why? Remember the children of Israel. Before they came into the promised land, they had, the first place they had to get to was go through Jericho. They had to fight the battle of Jericho. You always gonna have to fight to get your problem. Then. Elijah went, struck the river Jordan, they went across Jordan, Elisha followed him, and that's when the chariot came down out of heaven, the fiery chariot took old Elijah back to heaven, and Elisha got the mountain, and a double portion anointed. Jordan, people, is the place of death. Death to self. You're not going to ever get, you cannot get no resurrection until you have a death. Think about it. Think about it. We want a resurrection, but we don't want to die. Think about it. Come on, people. Think. 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 It had to be a Friday before that could be a Sunday. You see, if Jesus hadn't went on the cross, there wouldn't have been no resurrection that Sunday morning. People, this is what this lesson is all about tomorrow morning. Or I should say this morning now because it's after 12 o'clock. This is what this Sunday school is about. It's about the promise of God. Paul was telling the Romans, we, there is nothing, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, in other words, we, all of us, some of us thinking that we so much just because we're doing a little bit of this, doing that. you are not, you are not doing nothing. God is not even looking at that. It's only what his son did that God looked at. 
So, you know, you might be doing all right today, but you're going to mess up tomorrow. And that's all of us. We cannot do right, people. Just face the music. You know, I know that gonna that 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 gonna that tearing a lot of y'all boats up. I know it because I said you can't do right. You can't. You can do right for a minute, but your righteousness is nothing but filthy rags in the eyesight of God. Cause he he you can't. We cannot live the life that we need to live without the Holy Spirit. See, it's the Holy Spirit that give us the grace. In order to do the little bit that we think we that we are doing, but the work is done by the Holy Spirit. All of us get to brag because we had a victory here. Thank God for that victory. I've had a few victories, and I've also had a lot of failures too. I've had a few victories, but I had a lot of failures. And I and I and yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and tell nobody that I got it because I admit me man ain't got nothing right. But I do know a man that paid the penalty for me. See, I'm justified. See, this this is why a lot of people don't even realize they don't recognize they get it. That's why people get it. I thought you was a Christian. I tell you what, I dare you to do something and slip and fall. The first thing people start saying, some of them that ain't got no understanding, say, I thought you was a Christian. See, that's the wrong thing to say because regardless of what, yes, we are Christians, but we are flesh as well. We cannot, you, you, you can, you can get a victory today. People say, I'm laying in the bed. It's easy to, to lay in the bed and be a Christian because you ain't met nobody. You ain't got up yet. But as soon as you put your feet on the floor, here come the devil. Oh, yeah. Here he come. You can, you can, you can rest assured. And it doesn't matter what you do or how good you try to be, and you can really be trying to be all the best you can be. Somebody going to rub you wrong. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you, other people, will drag you down. And some people live for that, it seems like. They are not satisfied to see nobody else trying to do all right. They got to do something to mess it up. Because, see, their mentality is so small. They think everybody else's mentality should be the same way. But just because of the fact that you're struggling, don't want them but everybody else to struggle. You ought to be praying to God and asking God to give you the strength to get you over that point where maybe you can help somebody else. People, that's what we should look at. Elijah, Elijah. And Elisha, two different people. Because I know a lot of people think that's the same person. No, it's not the same person. One was Elijah. And his follower, his disciple, the one he was teaching it, was Elisha. That's the way it is. Elijah and Elisha. See, you got to do this. You got to do it this way. Because people will take what you say literally. And they are misunderstanding. They'll swear all by the God that you said they were the same people. They're not the same people. They're not. Two different persons, two different individuals. Elijah was the man that was the champion on Mount Carmel. Elisha was his student, his disciple that followed him to Bethel, to Gilgal, to Jericho, and crossed the Jordan and dropped his mantle to Elisha as he was going up into the heaven. That's the way that is. So tomorrow we got a, we got a good Sunday school. They're going to show us how we are justified. In other words, out of all the mess I've been in and out of all my faults and failures, it is not me that God look at that. He look at me. Now I'm justified. He look at me. He look at you. Just if I never seen. Yeah. That's where God see it. Yeah. Even in your mess. Even in your mess. When you fall and make the mistake which you gonna make by and by. He still look at you just as you never seen. Why? Because of his son. Because of what Jesus did. The blood covered. In other words, just as the blood covered the people seeing in the Old Testament under the animal sacrifices, that blood covered the sins from year to year. But see, Jesus' blood didn't only cover it. It took it away. It took it away. 
It took it away just as far as it is. The east is from the west. See, in other words, God don't see no sin now that I do. But is that a license to sin? God forbid. No, 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 no. Just because we know that we are justified, we don't live to sin. Because he that is born again do not seek to sin. You don't look for ways to sin. Now, I know that might sound strange. But no, once you have been born again and you say that you've got the blood of Jesus in your life and that you are following him, you don't look for ways to sin. This is a different people. I know a lot of people don't understand it. I did for a long time. I didn't understand it. But I thank God I understand it now. See, I'm subject to fail because I'm human. See, God knows that. That's why he made the preparation before the time began. God had already made the preparation because he knew we were going to need a Savior. He knew it. The Ten Commandments show you that you need a Savior. You can't keep them Ten Commandments. Neither can I. And anybody that set up and said they can keep the Ten Commandments, get away from them. Get away from them because they're lying. The truth ain't in them. No one can keep the old Ten Commandments. No one. No one ever done it but Jesus, period. Jesus kept the law perfect. He even did it in his death, people. Remember, I'm going to show you one point, how Jesus kept the law. Even in his death, he kept the law. Don't the Jews celebrate Passover and the Sabbath? The Sabbath day, remember what the, the law said. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember that? That was one of the Ten Commandments. Jesus died on a Friday. Wasn't he off that cross by 6 o'clock that Friday? Guess when the Sabbath started? On 6 o'clock that Friday. Jesus was already in the tomb resting. So even in his death, he kept the law. He was the only one that could keep it. Think about it, people. Now Jesus looks at you. He looks at me. Just as we never sin. Long as we trust, and believe in his son. That's all you got to do. But just because you trust and believe in his son, that don't mean that you gon you're not gonna fall sometime. Because see, if we could keep it flawless, if we could do it, then Jesus died in vain. Amen. Thank God for y'all. This here lesson in the morning is gonna be a real good one. I can tell it. Hopefully, my sister can teach it. And I know she will do the, the job just as always. It's just good to be among the, 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 the living, to be a part in the, of the family of God and to learn and to try to do better. That's what we do, people. We try to do better day by day. Day by day. We try to reach for the prize of the high calling in Christ. It's me, the man, send it to the next Bible study, next uh, video, whichever comes first. Peace. Good night.